Welcome back, everybody. As you well know, we are celebrating 39 years of John Lomax on the WKRC Airwaves, his final day a week from Friday. And we're going way back now. We're going early 1980s. A guy named George Chicarone shared these hallways with the Godfather, and he is here to reminisce with John. We just had him sneak around the corner. I'm going to send it over to you guys. Yeah, it, it was a surprise to see George. I saw George every day, every workday for uh, for a long time. Uh, Many it, years. Yeah, yeah. He, he, back in the early 80s and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, this was back during a time to where uh, uh, George largely did our, our a people segment. Right. He did right. To, uh, uh, the stories about that you actually remember. <laughs> and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, we, we tried to do it called By George, and it was all people that we felt should be making headlines but weren't. Right. So we, we highlighted all these people. And a shameless plug doesn't put a dime in my pocket, yeah. but we unearth all of those old stories from the 80s. And they're like yeah. little time capsules. They're really fun to watch. And we put them up on uh, um, Facebook. Right. So it's Cincinnati by George. If anyone wants to go, and you can see some of the old stories that we did here way back in the day. Yeah. And this is a little inside baseball in that uh, uh, there was a time when we were all congregating the halls and that sort of thing, and you knew about somebody's story before it actually appeared on the air, mm -hmm. and we would talk about George's stories uh, oh, yeah. because they were the most interesting things to talk about. Uh, um, and, and, and just some odd things, like uh, there was one I remember where a fellow had a, a, a corpse in his. Uh, I thought you'd talk about um, Speedy, yeah. Yeah, Speedy. Yeah, Speedy. He, um, we, we, got, we used to get letters from, from all the people out in the tri-state, and they would tell us and tip us to certain things. And there was, a, um, there was a, a dead man standing in a broom closet in Paducah, Kentucky, for at the time, I think it was like 30 years or something like that. Yeah. True story. <laughs> yeah. And we, so we went out, and the story goes, it was a, an old funeral home. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the <laughs> fellow who ran the funeral home passed away. But his, his goal in life was to create a, an embalming fluid that would pre preserve a body for eternity. That was his thing. Right. So the problem was, is once you embalm someone, you have to bury them. So he didn't know whether it was working or not. <laughs> so he, uh, back in the flood, when was it, 2930, the great flood, uh, one of the workers there, Speedy Atkins, died in the flood. He didn't have any family. So uh, Mr. Uh, Barnes, I think his name would said, hmm, let's, he went in the back, whipped up a batch of this stuff, and he had bombed Speedy with it. <laughs> and they kept him standing in the broom closet for 30 years. And, and people would come from all over to see Speedy. And what happened was, uh, as word got out, it was like a morbid curiosity. So yeah. again, people would come from all over. And they passed a local law uh, saying that you didn't have to bury Speedy because he was like a local treasure <laughs> and he was bringing more people to Paducah, uh, Paducah than industry or anything else. So it was a true story. Now, yeah, now imagine, now imagine him telling this story before it actually goes on the air, or it's even edited or anything, and you've got uh, like six or seven photographers, about a half dozen reporters, and we're back in the back and we're screaming and hooting and hollering about this going on. It was just a different time. You know, when we started the, uh, the By George thing on Facebook, that was the first one we oh, put up. Okay. So if you want to see Speedy, go to Cincinnati By George, go way back and you'll see, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But no, it's a true story. And we did a story um, about a, uh, a horse exorcist who performed exorcisms on racehorses. And, uh, the uh, lady who fed the fish uh, uh, the, the, by hand? Oh, that was um, uh, Inga Meckel, uh, rest fed, her soul. Fed a mashed potato. Yeah, we put, uh, she and that fish, um, we found it was this woman, she's a big German woman who would get in the, <laughs> get in the lake. And, and she was she waist would, deep in this lake. And Yeah, she loved it. She had this accent. She was such a delight. And she would get in there and go, Charlie, Charlie. And this goldfish <laughs> that they threw in the lake grew this big. Yeah. And it would come out of the water and eat, uh, eat p potatoes off a spoon. Right. <laughs> that was the <a> story. Right. <laughs> so, you know, people laugh, but we, uh, we ended up uh, putting her and Charlie the Fish on Letterman and uh, also on uh, Johnny Carson at the time. And as a matter of fact, the woman who used to book the weird guests for Johnny Carson on The Tonight right. Show, her name was, I still remember, Darcy Hedrich. And we put, I, I'm guessing about 10 or 12 people from the Tri-State on The Carson right. Show. And she wrote a book, and it, uh, the name of the book is called, Does the, Does the Carp Travel Well? And it's okay. all, and she said, and it was because she found herself asking Inga Meckel, does the carp travel well? You know, because they wanted to fly the fish to Los Angeles. Yeah. And she, she made that the title of her book. 
Uh, and people ask why I stayed here. <laughs> but, we, but we did. We were very tight. Uh, we were close. Uh, we we kind of knew the, you knew the names of everybody's parents and, and, and all that sort of thing. It was just yeah, a you know, it was fun. We were, we were a big family, and I've, I've worked on a lot of different places. I still live here, and I live in Las Vegas. I go back and forth right. uh, pretty much monthly. And uh, of all the places I've worked, the people here are, you know, they're, they really are family, right. you know, and uh, once a year, or once every few years, we try to get together, uh, you know, as you know, up at Nick's house up in right. uh, Augusta, and yeah. it's so, you know, we all love each other, and that's, it's, it's a phenomenon I've never experienced, and it's well, wonderful. Anywhere else, and, uh, and I say this only half-jokingly, uh, that uh, once you uh, become, uh, you work here, you're mm -hmm. a member of this family, for better or worse, mm -hmm. kind of like the Cosa Nostra, with all that blood, with all, <laughs> all that bloody... It's very true, it's very true. <laughs> ...mess that, that goes with that. Uh, but it, it is, it's great, I'm so glad that you oh, took time you. to come up, and uh, it's just a pleasure see to see you. Oh, man, uh, you're my family, too, and I wish yeah. you the best. You come out to Las Vegas, I'll show you a good time. Oh, th before we go, I just want to say... Uh, this man took when the Playboy Club here was uh, was 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 on vapors and it was ready to leave. He wanted to make sure I had lunch at the Playboy Club before it left. So that tells you all you need to know about George Chikoro. I'm, okay? I'm, hum I'm a humanitarian and I, I take care of my workers. <laughs> You're a great humanitarian. Yes, you are. Oh, George. Thank you, buddy. Thanks uh, so much, John. It is not.